looks like another ritual stone, actually. Hey, hey! Nice. Can I go between these, or...? Nope. All I can do is chill at him. Okay. Well... Ugh. Okay. Ugh. <laughs> you know, your character gets, like, just enough height that it, it looks terrifying. It's quite, it's quite frightening. Okay, um... Well, maybe there's actually a way to climb back up on that rock. Doesn't look like it, but here, let's keep going this way. Just to see what's over here. Maybe we'll find a way back. I mean, there was a, there is a portal over here, so maybe this is a way that we can go. Or not. I think this might be... Yeah, I think that's the edge of the world over there. Okay, other ideas. I guess I'll go this way then. Again, I could just use the... the... bone with which you go homeward. But... I feel like exploring instead. Just because I don't want to miss anything. Oh, there's a big guy. Time to test out this axe. Hmm. It seems like it doesn't always break his guard, actually. Maybe I need to... Maybe I need to do a charge attack to break through his guard. Nice. <laughs> oh. Yokel is real good at hitting my enemies right in the face. That's, like, just smacking a guy right on the back of the head or in the side of the face. Just... Send him sprawling. Spiked cudgel. Savagery on a stick. Uh, that is what cudgels are for. The savage simplicity of a cudgel made even more vicious by the spikes driven through it. Sometimes the simplest solutions are the most effective. I can picture that. Yeah. In fact, it does look quite deadly. I think this, uh... I think this path might lead me on a, like, a one-way drop back down to where I want to go. Yeah, it looks like it. Or no, I, yeah. Yeah, I probably couldn't get here from the other side. Can I even make that jump? Guess we're gonna find out. Oh! Oh, I see. I hadn't considered that. If you sprint and then jump, you jump way further. Huh. I had not even tried that. I, I guess I didn't think that that was like a... I guess I didn't think that was a thing. Well, okay. We're back. Welcome back to town, Yokel. To abandon my brother like that, my father must have been desperate. Whatever he was looking for, he clearly thought he'd find it at the eye of the needle. I got a feeling we're headed that way next, so I'll make sure to... Make sure to poke around <clears throat> while I'm in the area. Let's see. Doesn't look like I can upgrade much here. Let's explore the town just a little bit more. Because, uh, I have a feeling I missed something important. Or at least something... <clears throat> something I could have taken a look at. I've unlocked a couple of things that say crafting now, and I'm I'm wondering what those could be referring to. Perhaps one of you ladies has something to say about it. The Einar are more fierce now, but their bodies seem unchanged by the light. If they are resistant to the sickness, I want to know why. <clears throat> Maybe we'll find out. And how about you? Looks like you've made your way back. Greetings. It seems it is my lot to accompany you. Nevertheless, it is a blessing to walk in the light once more, whatever the circumstance. Yeah, you don't seem too psyched about it, to be honest. Light be with you. The radiance of the ashen bathes us all in its grace. Or something like that. Let's see. I have a quest to speak with you. Do I have to activate that? Seems I do. 
Or no, I guess I have to go speak to my tall friend first. Oh, look, you're like building a whole little town here. Oh, oh, I bet I'm about to unlock crafting now that we got your hammer back. You claimed a reward from your battle in the Annex. However, I sense a great darkness within it. May I see it? Sure. Yeah, I already read the description, so you can have it. Three Elder Dark once stalked these benighted lands. Now there are but two. I'm sure that Amara will make good use of Okoto's corrupted face. Okay, I'll talk to her next. As you can see, I have created an anvil upon which to forge the ash. Bring your weapons to the anvil so that I may reforge them and make them stronger. All right, nice. Let's see what we got. Oh man, it just, it just uses, uh, it just uses my souls for it. Well, what do I want to use? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I guess I can use whatever I want. There, there doesn't seem to be any stat requirements or anything like that in this game. There doesn't seem to be a stat system at all, which I really appreciate. I really appreciate that there's no stat system in this game. Well, let's see. Uh... It's looking like the stone axe is probably my best choice right about now. Oh, these are these are two-handed weapons though, right? I gotta keep that in mind. Does it say that anywhere? No, I guess it doesn't. It doesn't look like it does. Um hmm. Well. Guess I'll upgrade the cudgel for now. That seems like a very solid choice. I see the, uh... I see the benefits and the deficits of the cudgel, though. The cudgel doesn't have any critical hit chance. It has literally zero. Um... Actually, I think I'll go with the bearded axe. Why not? Axes are cool. I think we'll do that. Upgrade that axe. Okay. Put that in my hand. So I, I am wondering if there's a place to like store things that I'm not going to be using. Doesn't actually seem like it. Well, here we'll upgrade the stone axe as well because I'm because <laughs> I'm using it. I already have it equipped. I, I suppose this is a kind of a system where since everything upgrades uh, v very, very specifically with uh, your, your Scoria, you can use pretty much whatever you want, which I appreciate that. I, I really don't mind that. Uh, I don't know if there is a way to store items or anything like that right now, so I'm just going to keep the stuff I have with me, but I, I guess I just have to remember what I have upgraded. Because it says on the name, the, the name denotes the upgrade level, it seems. Like, these are broken because I haven't upgraded them at all, and then this one isn't. Now, can I, like... Oh, I can! Look at that! I can just rearrange these wherever I want them to be. Cool. Well, that's actually quite useful. I appreciate having this kind of a system. Because it means I can put everything just, like, in the bottom here. There we go. It reminds me of Breath of the Wild a little bit, actually. Except the weapons can't break. <laughs> but yeah, it's got a very similar inventory system. Similar items, too. Okay. Well, let's go on over to Amara, then, and give her this, give her this faceplate, because I don't think there's anything I can do with it. I don't think. <laughs> I got something for you. As the light washes the ugliness from our world, the desperate shadows grow more dangerous. Okoto was one such shadow. His faceplate remains drenched in dark power. I see. Well, I would rather not be carrying that around, so you, you, can, you can take it off my hands if you like. You cannot fight the shadows without my help. Only I can draw the light from your scoria. Here, 
Take this talisman to my weaving table, and I will show you how it is done. Okay. Ah, I see. Uh, I think the, the talismans are, uh... I, mean, I, I think I have templates that I can use to make talismans, I assume. Yes, so... So it seems that I unlock... So I use the... I use the relics that I collect while I'm running around to unlock talismans, which I can then uh, craft. Okay. Cool. Well, let me take a look at the one I have right now. Hearth. Pressed closely against your chest, this relic recalls the warm comfort of a safe home and full stomach. It serves as a thin barrier against despair. Spend long enough wandering and you forget what having a home even feels like. Yeah, I, I know how you feel there, buddy. Well, it doesn't seem like the one I have actually does anything. So, whoops. Keep hitting the wrong button. Ah, because I upgraded my weapons, I don't actually have enough for that right now. Darn. Let's see what we got, though. Uh... Oh, I think I actually already have this unlocked. Interesting. Orbs appear when striking enemies, dealing bonus damage based on the weapon you wield. Orbs disappear when you're hit. Oh, okay. Darkness envelops the bearer's form, growing stronger with every strike they elude. Dance with the shadows in these endless days of dark. Yeah, that's my favorite Bruce Springsteen song. Oh, oh, I see. I I've only got... Wait. Oh, okay. I think I get it. I think I have four slots, as you can see over there on the left, and then it, it costs it costs that much to unlock them to equip in those slots. So we've got health increased a little bit, a stun bonus while wielding a lantern, or my damage resistance increases over time while I have a companion close by. That one's probably really good for, for co-op. I imagine. Okay, well I, I don't have enough scoria for any of these right now, so we'll we'll have to come back and take a look at these later. But these seem these seem quite useful. Uh, just as like rune slots essentially, or ring slots perhaps. Nice stuff. Geffen bound me to help you. But I cannot find the hearts without my lyre. It allows me to weave light and sound, to feel the very edges of the world. When I protected Geffen from Makoto, the Elder Dark broke it. Nearby in the forest, the vagrants make a glue that could make it whole again. I see. Find a pot of glue. Well, that seems like a good way to get my hands on some more scoria. So, that's that's actually quite nearby. So, okay. Um, I guess let's go do that then. Just just because it, it'll be a chance for me to get some scoria and unlock some, some relics, talismans, whatever you want to call them. And plus, we haven't actually been this way yet. So this will be a good chance to check out what's over here. Because we haven't even gone this direction yet. <laughs> Man, I really like this game. It's it's very charming. I I appreciate I appreciate that this game seems very self-aware about about its charm, which is um It it's it's very interesting. It's it's hard to describe. It it revels in that that indie it, You know, it's funny. I talked about this on a live stream recently, recently as of this recording, but a new genre, almost, of video game is emerging, where... Oh, come on. A new genre of video game is almost emerging. Video game development, I mean. Where it's, like, halfway between AAA and indie. Uh, I, at, on the stream, I called it AA development. It's... It's... AAA almost quality games made by uh, more independent studios without a huge publisher behind them. And, and this game so far seems to have that kind of a sensibility about it. 
Oh, I don't, I don't know if I can make it back there even with the sprinting. Never mind. <laughs> Your sprint jump is real good, actually. It's super good. But yeah, this game seems to have that kind of a sensibility where it's got more indie game... Ooh! More indie game presentation with AAA polish. It seems like a very polished game. Uh, I mentioned very early on that uh, it, it, it was presented to me personally as a more simplistic take on the, the combat RPG, open world exploration, slow paced combat roll, dodge, plan out your attacks, etc, etc, heal slowly type of game, collect souls and level up. I'm trying really hard not to call it a Souls-like, <laughs> if you can't tell. I, I'm trying very actively not to call it that, because it has an identity of its own the same way all games like that do. It's not really fair to just call it like, oh, it's like Dark Souls and that's the end of it. Because no, like I said, this game's more simple presentation in the mechanics, I feel like works to its advantage in a, a really, really interesting way. Pot of glue obtained. Can I look at it in my inventory? Give me that pot of glue lore. Despite the smell, glue made from fish is a valuable resource. Vagrants have long been able to render glue from the skin and bones of their catches. In my youth, I once stuck dried deer dung to a sleeping Einar using a big dab of raffet glue. You should have seen it run when its packmates caught the scent. <laughs> what a rude prank to play on the wildlife. I guess I'm learning a lot about predators and prey. I wonder how long this game is. It seems like it's only just getting started. I, I wonder... I wonder how many hours I'm gonna get out of this. Either way, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy them. I, I really have enjoyed this past, I don't know, two hours or so I've been playing so far. Hi there. I'm back. By the light, that glue reeks like the breath of an elder dog. How can you bear such a stink? I suppose it depends on what you're accustomed to. Well, that's kind of rude. I feel like that's insulting my heritage. You know, my no-face heritage. Although you don't have a face either. So, I guess we're on even ground, except for your, adv your advantage in height. I should thank you. The smell will dissipate once the glue hardens. As soon as it does, I will weave light and sound to find the twin hearts. Okay. Good luck with that. Max stamina up. Interesting. Okay. So it looks like completing these quests that are in my quest log are the way that I increase my stats. Fascinating. That's a fascinating system. I really like that. That is a very, very interesting way to do things. All right. So let's see. Increased health. Stun bonus using a lantern. Damage resistance when we're hanging out with Yokel. I think I'll, I'll do this just because I'm flying solo here, but were I playing in co-op, I think me and my partner, whoever it would be, would focus on this one. Let's do it. Ah, so, okay. So I can just come back here and change them out whenever I want, I assume. Cool. We're gonna need a lot of, a lot of scoria for this one. I bet if I had saved up everything that I've earned so far, I bet I would be able to afford this just barely. But we'll let it, we'll let it pass for now. That's actually quite a, quite a, an advancement in health, actually. That's... Let me look. Can't see my maximum, but still, it's, uh, it's no small increase. Uh, Yokol, we gotta go to the Eye of the Needle. And hunt three Einar for, uh, for Vorsa. Batarin has information on finding a heart. Okay, well, let's go talk to him then. Get our next major quest started. I have a feeling it's going to send us to the Eye of the Needle. But if it sends us in the opposite, uh, the opposite direction, we'll go to the Eye of the Needle first. What's up, my man? 
Geffen wishes us to recover the heart of Lothyrus? Then you must travel deeper into this desolate city. The Whispers would be a good place to start. Matriarch Amiren took shelter there after she sundered the heart. The road to the Whispers has been blocked by listeners loyal to the Matriarch. We must find a way through, and I believe I know of one who might help us. Share away. Always in the market for more friends in this kind of world. There is a new arrival in the stormed ruins. She is from the Whispers. When you meet her, you will realize why she was so easy for me to hear. <laughs> okay. I guess I'll keep an ear out. First of all, I saw an item up here. We'll go and find the Traveler then. After we, uh... Explore up here and scoop up this item off this body. What do you got for me? Oh, Craven Remnant. I'm carrying around quite a few of those, so I, I will not hesitate to use them. Uh, once I really start needing them. Because I feel like the farther and farther we go away from the hub, the, the more important it will be to use these to get back. Especially when I don't feel like traveling through a bunch of enemies again. We're not quite there yet, but... Again, we'll get there. Let's see. Oh. Oh, we just have to head out. We're, we're heading. We're heading across the stream. Across the stormed ruins. Okay. Looks like our path to the Eye of the Needle is actually blocked. So we, we need to go this way in order to unblock the path. Okay. Well, let's go back to the hub for now. I'm not really sure how to segment this. So, back in the day, when I did my Resident Evil 4 Let's Play, I specifically announced when it was the end of a session, and I went back to the main menu and called it a day and all that stuff. But I don't know if that was a good way to do it or not. It made the Let's Play feel a little bit segmented. I suppose me even speculating about that on camera means that you can tell that this little session is over, but... I guess I'll do that. I guess I'll segment it into play sessions. It's been about two hours or so. Sum up my thoughts on the game so far. I'm really, really enjoying it. I think this game starts off very strong. And, and so far, I don't know if I'll have to redact this later, but so far I really would recommend this to people who are looking for um, combat RPGs that are more on the lighter side of the mechanics. This game doesn't seem to have the most deep mechanics in the world, but it doesn't have to. Like, that's something that I really, really enjoy about it so far, is that it, it, it establishes what it has mechanically very early on, and now it is rolling out ways to, to use those mechanics in various ways. Ways that, that I feel have been very smooth. This game's presentation is extremely smooth so far. So if you're looking for a, a lighter uh, experience, um, I would say that this is definitely one so far. So all right, I'll see you next time. I suppose, if I decide to end the episode here anyway. <laughs>